on to litigation is on the increase. People are living longer and more people are retaining their teeth into later life. Consequently, the overall potential periodontal risk is rapidly rising. But what drives patient claims? Failure to diagnose is the most common reason. A patient may potentially be unaware of the presence or extent and severity of the disease. Periodontal disease left untreated may result in tooth loss, which would then be grounds to seek a claim of clinical negligence. It's therefore clear that accurate periodontal diagnosis and the communication of key messages to the patient is absolutely imperative. Furthermore, failure to document essentially means a failure to diagnose. Good contemporaneous clinical records are fundamental. Listen to the patient. Most of the time, they will give you clues that will contribute in making the diagnosis. The BSP, British Society of Periodontology, suggests asking the following seven questions to reveal all. Do your gums bleed on brushing or overnight? Are any of your teeth loose? Can you chew everything you want to? Do you have a bad taste or smell from your mouth? Do you suffer from pain, swelling, gum boils or blisters? Do you smoke? And is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Periodontal probing is crucial for diagnosis and monitoring. The BPE is used to screen every new and recall patient for periodontal disease. It is used to indicate the level of examination required to provide basic guidance and treatment need. In 2011, the BSP published updated guidelines on the BPE. The main changes were that the use of the asterisk symbol should now be used to denote only the presence of a fication and that both the number code and the asterisk should be recorded for each sextant where vocation involvement is found. It's also imperative to remember that full probing depths are required for any sextants where a code 3 is recorded. If a code 4 is present, a full six-point pocket chart is needed. It's the responsibility of the dentist to screen patients, make a diagnosis, and institute a treatment plan with defined therapeutic goals. Often, there may be cases where we feel uncomfortable in managing it alone, either because of the extent or complexity of the problems. As part of patient management, and with an aim to achieve predictable outcomes, one should then consider referring such patients to a specialist. It is important to bear in mind that in cases of severe periodontal disease, it's much easier for a patient to allege after the event that they would prefer a referral to specialist care. Similarly, one should minimize any delay in referral. The BSP has created guidelines for referral, so you should definitely have a look at these. If you need to write a referral letter, you should contain the patient's personal details, reasons for your referral, any urgent problems, relevant medical history, smoking status, details of periodontal treatment completed, and relevant charts and radiographs. Many hospitals have an enormous demand for services, and your patient will have the greater chance of being accepted if as much relevant information as possible is provided. If the patient declines referral, details should be documented in the clinical notes and the option of referral should be discussed again at their next recall appointment.